Hello everybody. Well, another day, another heart-stopping Warriors game. The Warriors played some really tough defense and got some lucky bounces to pull this one out. And good old Kavon Looney really came through with some big plays down the stretch. Let's jump right into it. Here Bogdanovich wants to ISO Looney. They perceive Looney as the easiest person to ISO on the perimeter. Old friend Eric Paschal is being guarded by Looney, so he comes up to set a screen to force Looney to switch on to Bogdanovich. Okay, this is what they want. They got the big guy ISO'd on the perimeter. He should be barbecued chicken, right? Beautiful poke away. I, I don't know if the Warriors all have been going to the Andre Iguodala school or something, but I feel like this season they've gotten better at these little poke aways. And Bogdanovich will track this down, but instead of having six on the shot clock to put Looney in the blender, now he's got under four seconds. He's going to be in trouble now. He's just got to run up and hoist it from wherever he can. And so Looney's going to get a great contest from a pretty far away shot. That barely hit the backboard. Good rebound by Otto Porter Jr. coming back to get that. The Warriors go to a old play of theirs, which I've been calling Invert Stagger because you have two smalls setting this stagger screen across the top for Wiggins. And then both these guys are going to run down and Poole is going to set a pin-in screen for Steph. So that's the heart of the play. And then in order to get the ball over to Steph, whoever's over here pops out to get the pass back from Wiggins. So this is a play that we've seen before. If you go back and look at my video about Clay's return, this is the first play of the game which Clay hijacked in order to get his own shot. So here's the pass back. Otto Porter Jr. comes out. Poole's man is doing a good job gummy up the works here, but Poole's gonna fight through it and set this pin and screen for Steph. Now the thing about setting a screen for Steph Curry is that you often get open because you're setting a screen for Steph Curry. You've got two defenders here. This guy's following Steph. He's trying to carry Steph like in Australian rules football. And this fellow has to decide, should I jump out to cover Steph on this cut? Well, what do you think happened? Steph's man follows him. This guy jumps out because no one ever got fired for covering Steph Curry, even if he's shooting one for 12 or whatever he was shooting today. Truly dreadful shooting game for him. And so that means Jordan Poole can spring free to the basket. Nice pass from Otto Porter Jr. Eric Paschal does a good job rotating to Poole. Good hard jump out, which prevents a dunk. So Pascal's man, Looney, cuts baseline. And so Joe Ingles here has to bust his Australian rules butt over to, to make sure the pass doesn't go to Looney. But that's just really good defense from the Jazz. So Ingles is now covering Looney, sort of, and he's turning to contest Poole's shot. Pascal has gotten out of position because he was overplaying Poole. Poole had faked going this way on him. And so Poole's going to put up a floater, which he can definitely hit more often than not, but yeah, he's not going to make it. But the key is that Kavon Looney didn't give up on the play. He went to the basket. Pascal is out of position, so Looney, in fact, has inside position on this side. Ingles is just kind of looking on this side. So it's just up to the basketball gods now. And it was really unlucky for Poole to miss that floater, but it's also a little bit lucky that the ball got to where Kavon could just barely get his little tips of his fingers on the basketball and he brings it down with one hand what a rebound in traffic and then with raw strength he goes up right back up because Rudy Gobert I don't really know why he wasn't in the game the last two minutes it's kind of mysterious I don't know if he was hurt or in the doghouse or what but they had Pascal out here instead and so Pascal is just going to whack Looney and Looney puts it through anyway here's the back angle of the play Steph is that away and two defenders are running to Steph and Jordan Poole is cutting to the basket. Good pass. His good buddy Pascal rotates nicely and Poole just dribbles across and does this great little ball fake. Pascal is flying to the left now like he's getting flung out of a catapult. Either Pascal got completely faked by 
pulls ball fake or Pascal knew that Ingles was behind him to rotate so I I don't know it's it either hustling defense that got faked out or four-dimensional chess defense I'm not sure which anyway great ball fake from Jordan Poole Looney is always doing the dirty work he goes straight to the basket and he's ready just in case this floater doesn't make it Wow look at that one-handed pull down by Looney beautiful and he goes straight back up Steph has had a pretty frustrating three weeks and here you can see his emotional reaction to Kevon Looney's incredible hustle play and he hits the free throw that was absolutely huge and not to be taken for granted with Kevon Looney a beautiful minute of basketball there from two-way Looney Looney okay next time down the court I, I guess they picked on Looney last time and that didn't work out so they're gonna try Steph next and I don't know if Mike Connolly just got a little too excited for his own good or what but he throws like three fakes at Steph and it is they're pretty good there's kind of like a head shake and then he, I think he's in the middle of doing an inside out dribble and he just loses the ball but uh, I, we're gonna give Steph partial credit because uh, he was the defender and he didn't go for the head fake or anything like that and I don't know maybe is his intimidating stature Otto Porter Jr. always seems to be in the right place now uh, we've already mentioned that Steph has been shooting like butt but he is still a really good point guard. Kavana Looney looks like he's setting a screen here for Steph. The Jazz are throwing a funky defense at Steph. It's not a box and one. These guys are matched up one on one. Bogdanovich is going to stay with Looney. Poole is covered. Pascal is going to cover Steph. But there's going to be a silent double team. This defender here is going to just zone up the paint behind Steph. So now Steph is just looking at the whole court and he sees, yep, yeah, there's Joe Ingles zoning up. Pascal here is going to just contest any kind of three-pointer that Steph throws up. And then if Steph blows by, then Jingles here will contest his shot. And then if Steph gets by him, then someone else will rotate. So there's a whole stack of Jazz defenders waiting for Steph. You can't do this for free, so someone has to be open. There's that matchup, that matchup, that matchup. And Andrew Wiggins is just hanging out in the corner. And so, Steph bullets the pass. And Wiggins just misses it. That was an open shot. In the meantime, Looney here, someone seems to have convinced him that he can get every single rebound in the world. And so here he's fighting three Jasmine for this rebound. And he gets his hand on it twice, but he can't quite hold on to it. So close. Jazz running a quick pick and roll. Next time down, Conley gets a screen from Ingles. The Warriors switch this screen, so Otto Porter Jr. is going to go to Conley, and Steph is going to go to Ingles. So there's a switch. Steph now on Ingles. And this is a foot race. Conley is smaller, and he's going to try to blow by Otto Porter Jr., but OPJ does a great job staying with him. And Looney is just hanging out in the paint. He's definitely ready to rotate in case Mike Conley Jr. gets passed. Conley has a great floater game, and he goes to the floater. And you know who else goes to the floater? Otto Porter Jr. with the block. He's quietly been a blocking machine, and that was a huge block. And the best part of all is that that block was under control and went straight to Jordan Poole. So at this point, the Warriors are just trying to milk the clock. And the Jazz are playing their soft double team on Steph. Here he's being guarded one-on-one. -on -one. The Jazz say, hey, we don't care if you have a screen or not. We don't need an invitation. It's eight on the shot clock. Jordan Poole is the open man. And so Ingles has to creep over while also being ready to intercept any kind of pass across. double team and Steph made a motion to pass it to Poole but Ingles has stepped up to try to deflect any kind of pass so Steph says what the heck these guys are all backing up and he successfully chowed down most of the shot clock this is a really good play by the Jazz. Pascal got the rebound and outlet it immediately. The Jazz all took off and caught the Warriors by surprise with their speed and subtly O'Neal over here is going to outrun Looney. Can't totally blame Looney for that. 
So at this moment, the Jazz realize they have an advantage. It's very subtle because Wiggins is closing in, but he is at this moment not guarding anybody. Looney is not guarding anybody. There's one Jasmine who's left behind. So here, there's a four on three. And the Jazz know that they have to go full speed ahead if they want to take advantage of this four on three before the Warriors recover. Otto Porter has to meet Conley because if he doesn't, let's say that he goes over to O'Neal, then Conley will have a completely free run to the basket pass over. Jordan Poole has a decision to make. He's got to cover this man because if he covers Joe Ingles, this guy can just dribble down here and get a layup. So the Warriors are just defeated by numbers here because the Jazz counterattacked so fast. And on the backside, Steph Curry is somewhere over here and Bogdanovich is in the corner. So there's the pass. This is just so well done. Why is Steph here? Well, if Steph were right up on Joe Ingles, then Ingles passes to Bogdanovich, who cuts down the baseline and certain dunk. So Steph just kind of gets stuck and he tries to split the difference. But what are you going to do? Steph is now covering two men. Really well done by the Jazz to run this. Ingles with the lightning pass to the corner right in the shooting pocket. And Steph can't do anything. Clutch three. So I don't, I don't know exactly what could have been done differently on that. The Jazz just ran that four on three to perfection. Maybe, maybe Steph could have stayed with Bogdanovich in the corner and just let Poole take his chances with Ingles and the ball handler O'Neal over here doing a two on one. I don't really know. I, I, I'm not sure that there was a really great answer uh, as soon as the Warriors got outrun down the court. The Warriors just trying to kill the last 12 seconds. There's confusion over whether Wiggins is going to step up and set a screen or Otto Porter Jr. They both come up to set the screen, Wiggins and OPJ. So finally OPJ gets there first, so he says, I'm going to set the screen. And Wiggins says, all right, I guess I'm not needed. I'll go back in space. But Wiggins' man Bogdanovich, I, I, I don't know if the Jazz are trying to do that same defense where someone zones up in the paint in case Steph gets by kind of looks like what's happening here. So either it's a mistake by Bogdanovich to go here, or it's the Jazz plan. And there he goes, Bogdanovich is there doing a soft double team of Steph. And Steph says, great, bring it on. And he throws a nice pass to Wiggins. Bogdanovich closing in, Wiggins attacking the closeout. The Warriors have an automatic where whenever someone attacks along this baseline, they try to set this hammer screen. So the shooter comes down to this opposite corner and then whoever's here, usually Looney, comes and sets a back screen on, on whoever might rotate over to get pool. Looney is nailing Pascal. And that is quite a spectacular move by Wiggins with a little spin into a pass. Wiggins saw this unfolding the whole time. Poole gets himself open. Ingles goes fast to try to close out. I don't know if Ingles actually hit Poole there or not. It might have been Poole just kicking his legs out. Okay, this is it. Otto Porter Jr. has picked up Bogdanovich. Six seconds left. He's going to have to hoist up a shot soon. And it's a sidestep. He gets a decent look at this. Otto Porter Jr. is contesting hand right in his face. Now that last play, I, I wasn't sure there was anything Steph could have done on that, but even though he was the closest man when Bogdanovich hit that huge three. But for this play, once the ball goes up, ideally Steph would be boxing out his man. But good hustle from O'Neal here just to go to the basket. And this is just a ready-made rebound for putbacks, the way that O'Neal snuck by Steph Steph definitely should have been boxing him out. Uh, and he does this great inside position to tap this back in. Basketball gods do not agree. Maybe this is payback for Bielitsa missing that open layup dunk at the end of the first half, or, uh, you know, or it's just random noise in the universe. But uh, that was good random noise. And the Warriors pull it out. All right, I can't resist talking about one bonus play. Jordan Poole gets ISO'd on Jordan Clarkson, so we've got some Jordan on Jordan violence. And he just throws this nasty in and out dribble. Here's a really nice angle of it. Poole's got his hand on this side of the ball, so it sure looks like he's going to bring it back across and he's going to go to the left. And in fact, he 
throws in a little fake with his shoulders to make it look like he's going to the left, but then he's going to go from having his hand on this side of the ball and then turn it over so that it's now on the other side of the ball so he can go to the right. That's his famous little in and out dribble. And here he is turning his hand over on top of the ball. Beautiful, and now the dribble's going this way. Clarkson doesn't know what's going on here. Okay, little celebration senses here. Steph throwing up the very classic OK3. That's perfectly good. Bielitsa standing up and showing his respects. At least he's not doing that crazy OK2, which I was criticizing the other day. Wiseman standing up. But uh, these fellows in the front are really doing work. Here is Chioza. He's, uh, does he have an actual towel? He's pretending to mop up the sweat from the floor from where Clarkson fell to the ground. Here's Juan Toscano Anderson pointing out like, no, look, there's more sweat over here where Clarkson got dropped. Oh, good. Yeah, you see Toscano Anderson pointing out some sweat here and then a little bit over here. And Moses Moody stepping up. He's actually got a towel himself. He's going to help out. This is good civic engagement by the Warriors. Good job. The work you put in today will be the good habits of tomorrow.